Hello, hello, happy Wednesday. We had um, wild and wooly wind and um, drama, 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 drama weather yesterday. So we didn't know if we'd managed to have our anything at, at noon yesterday. So, and it blew through right at 11.45. Yeah, it, can, it went through and um, most of our area was spared, but the county next to us received some pretty severe damage. Yeah. And then we are kind of on... Uh, Flood, flood watch over the next couple of days here. The yeah. We're right on the river and it's expected to yeah. come up. Stay safe, guys. Okay, so we are here on Wednesday instead of Tuesday, uh, but welcome. And we have a fun, 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 fun um, project to share with you today. And it's something that everybody needs and everybody might need three or four of them. Um, I'm going to say 10 of them. We had a customer order 10 yeah. today. Yay! Yeah, they're the neatest, neatest, neatest thing, and I use mine every single day. Me too. And you have to have one at home at least and one at the office mm -hmm. at least. Yeah, So you okay. need two, but then, man, if you're putting on makeup and doing any of that stuff with YouTube videos and stuff, you need one in the bathroom. You need one in every room. You yeah, need every, one on every your room. desk. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's true. But we're not going to tell you what you need yet because <laughs> I have some announcements. So first of all, hi, welcome. We are Studio Art 12 Stencils. I'm Carrie. I'm Patty. And we have thousands of stencils for you to paint. Yeah. And we go live typically on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern on Facebook and mm -hmm. YouTube and Twitch. And then we upload fun videos on Saturday mornings for you to tune in and learn techniques or see how we're using different stencils or embellishments, how we use our different tools that we have. Um, and so last week on our YouTube channel, we had a, a technique that we showed, Patty showed how to clean up the edges of your project. Mm -hmm. um, this is a thing that is hard for people to um, paint without messing up the edges. Um, and then if you mess up your edge, you really need to go back and clean that up. And I show you a couple of ways to do that. Yeah, and regardless if you are painting for yourself to hang on your wall, painting for a gift, painting to sell, yeah. you're going to want it to look professional and look like something that you bought rather yeah. than painted. And so it's a really great video for that. This week, I'm not going to show you the front of it. I'm just going to show you the back of it. We're painting on a Dollar Tree surface. Yay. And so we have a fun lesson coming for you on Dollar Tree and kind of a moving your stencils around. You might have noticed the slats that were cut in that. Yeah. So. And the Dollar Tree is really, um, I. They, they have some horribly cheap items that are seasonal, that are like almost like cardboard. Mm -hmm. um, they're wood, but they feel like cardboard. Um, but they, in their upper thing where they've got $3 and $5 things, they've had some really good surfaces. So um, I'm all about saving money. So like, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna pay more than I have to for things. Yeah. So. If you can find surfaces for affordable. Heck yeah. And I seem to want to give everything away right now. So I'm always talking about making gifts, mm -hmm. but um, like, I feel like it's important um, to, to be able to afford to give a gift. We're in weird times. And I think that that's nice to keep up your, you can do your hobby and you can make it pay for you to do it, you know? So um, I think that's super fun too. So if you're making your gifts for, on the cheap, um, then you can have it pay for the stencils you might need for it or whatever. So yeah, I agree. I think um, today, I think, is going to be a really great day if maybe we can um, talk our friend Steve into just making like a pop in appearance. I just got ah! a message that says Emmett said hi, Dad. <gasps> so if Emmett's oh. watching, hi, Emmett. Hi, Emmett. All right, here's Steve. Steve. Dad. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> We knew we'd get to coax him on here one day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Emmett, for helping us do yeah, that. that is so good. That is so awesome. He would do anything yes, for his son. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's so, um, so we do have one more quick announcement. Our April 2024 project of the month, you can pre-order it now. And I do have a slight little teaser that I can give you for it. Um, I've been kind of calling it like the gift that keeps on giving, and mm -hmm. it's something that you'll be able to use year round. So I'm just going to leave it at that, and I'm going to tell you, you're going to be probably 
overwhelmed with the amount of things that you're going to get. Yeah, it's it's um, not an overwhelming project. Nope. But it has a lot of things with it. And um, so we are doing our generous best. And it is something that, um, like, it is it's timeless and you need it. Yep. I'm just going to say it. Yeah, That's timeless it. and you need you it. You need it. So I'm going to share the link for that. You only have a few more days left to sign up to get that. It is pre-order only. We do not release what it is until after our Sensual fans have received it. But we do um, also send you a little, um, um, like a little booklet that mm -hmm. shows you I painting ideas with it so that that way you're not getting something cold that you're like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. And um, I also film a video for that that is released only to the project of the month people and so then i walk you through how i painted and give you any tips and hints and things like that so that's a private video just for the people in the project of the month so if you want to be part of the the yeah. secret group then um get that project now of the we, month. we do release the products and the video to the public but it is not until six months later oh. And it's not for the, the price that you the can get for the pre-order. Yeah. So the pre-order price is $49.99, and that's pretty standard every month. But when we release the full set to the public, we do it at our retail price. Yeah. And they've been like $80 and $90 is, if not over, yeah. $100, because that's actually what the value of the project is. Yeah, so it's always a great value. Mm -hmm. And you get it early, and it is always going to be something that you can use Um within like two months. Like yeah. if we're gonna do anything that's a holiday, we're gonna be a couple months in mm -hmm. front of it so that that way you can get it done and done and hung, right? So um, that is a, like a, a thing that we are very cognizant of. And that's why it's a project instead of just like a stencil. I think just getting some stencils you don't have know what to use them on and stuff, I yeah, think is, is a little bit lame. So we like this because um, you get your surface, you get your stencil, you get your instructions, yes. all the things. All the things. Okay, are we ready? We're ready. Okay, so this is what we have going on here. This is our phone stand family. And we have um, the chair. And now I will say I have the, uh, the, the blah, blah, blah. Tell me my phone. S22 Ultra. <laughs> S22 Ultra. So I'm like the big Mac daddy of this stuff. And it fits in there. So um, all the rest of these, your phone sits on here. One of the things I was talking about yesterday at lunch I bought a new case because I dropped my phone and broke my other case. This thing lays down like its kickstand is ridiculous. So I do not appreciate um, laying over my phone to see it. So this can sit right up by my computer. Um, I use it sometimes as another monitor because then it's at the right <coughs> level. Um, I also use it and when I'm cooking, I'm, I'm a food freak, so I love to cook. And when I'm cooking, I either have a YouTube video with the techniques or any of that stuff. Am I on this camera? It's okay. <laughs> Whatever, wherever you're wherever looking, you are. Wherever I was you like, are, wait, am I supposed are. to switch? We have like cameras everywhere. Um, anyway. Oh, uh, now I'm over there. Okay. Hi. I'm Patty. <sighs> okay. Anyway. Um, so, but when I'm cooking, I have it by my station. If you have your cooking and you're stirring and you're doing things and you have it laying flat, splatters that come out of your pot, any of that kind of stuff can really be a problem if you're laying flat. If you spill something, there goes your phone, right? So getting it up off the counter onto something that you can position and then see is just fantastic. So what I love about these is that number one, they're cheap, cheap, cheap. So we're back into the, the affordable stage. I'll take this unpainted guy. They just come apart and then they fold flat for storage. So if you want to pack one in a suitcase and take it with you, you can do that. The little feet seats things come off too. We try to make them really tight. Um, I'm just gonna not try to put that on while I'm on camera. Um, they're also reversible. So you can paint on the back side of this as well. So if you paint this piece, which is your stand, you paint this piece black, and then, or white or whatever color, base color that you want. And then you can paint the back side one thing and you can paint the front side another thing. And that is fantastic. But equally exciting, if we had a great uncle called a tablet stand, 
get any in there. Ta-da! New today. This is the tablet stand. So this is your iPad level or cookbook level. We have a cookbook stand as well. Um, so either of those, this, the cookbook stand gets a little bit bigger. But um, super great for getting your tablet off of your kitchen counter, off of your, off of your desk. Um, all the flat things are not ideal when you're doing that. So today we're going to paint one of these. And I'll give you my tips and tricks and stuff. Um, if I was doing the beach chair, I would glue that one together because this will all, you can get it all apart and then it's just harder to get together. So I would glue this one. This is the one that I have at my house all the time um, and I haven't glued it, I don't know why. But, um, and then this is the original. They used to be made out of thin. Now they're out of a nice thick material. Let's go here. So this is original and I like it much better out of the thick. Um, you can get mad and pop this thing and um, make, make damage. You cannot do that with these, so. All right. Um, you said cheap, cheap, cheap. Yeah. And Emmett said, chicks go cheap, cheap, cheap. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying that. Yes, he was. <laughs> All right. So let's get this stuff out of the way. Cheap, cheap. All right. So we're going to paint this guy. And I've, we've got different examples. So you, this one has the flourish. I didn't say all of that. Um, this one we put the corners on, the new corner uh, wood embellishments. And then notice I've got a pattern background and then I've got a glittery bee. Mm -hmm. So um, just different ways that you can paint them. So you can do them with pattern, you can do them. I was thinking about this earlier. You could base coat it and then just put stickers on it, you know, and just have fun with it. We're sending out stickers with our project of the month so you would have nice painting stickers. All right, so let's paint. Today, I have chosen sassy colors. So we're going to go with these three. So I've got number 27, number 28, and number 45. So I decided I wanted something super girly, and I'm doing um, do things, do great things with love. And I'm gonna do some harlequins. And then we have a whole bunch of stencils. I was really surprised by this when I was looking at the list of them. For whatever reason, I think that this would be way too big. And this is a skinny little um, piece of wood, but like that fits on there. And so there, it's amazing to me how much stuff actually fits. I think the wine little does too. Nope, that one's gonna go on the bigger one. Anyway, so we have a bunch of stencils that work with that, so you can choose whichever, pat, whichever color pattern um, words that you want, or even icons. Okay, so we're gonna take our white. This is gonna be one of those that you want to, um, do we know the trick about, I wonder if I did it, I didn't do it. Um, the trick about shaking your paint, okay, this is an important trick. When you shake your paint and you don't wanna get your blouse painted, then you put it down firmly and then it won't spit at you when you open it. So that is a really good technique. Okay, and then we wanna keep this clean, so we're gonna do a little bit of a technique here. So we wanna go just super gentle pressure where the cutouts are, and then I'll flip off the edges The other alternate that you could do with something like this, this isn't hard to paint, I'm just trying to show you how to be careful. Um, the other thing that you could do is grab a can of spray, um, um, I don't have white over here. You can grab a can of white flat primer and you could prime the entire thing and do it that way. So that's another way, anytime you have a lot of cutouts, this would also be a good time to use the jumbo dauber or the ink sweeper. Yes, to base you are right. What am I doing? It's such a large area. Harry, thank you. You're welcome. So watch all of that shenanigans, but you can do it if you only have the phone. So now I can go over here and do my edges. See how much better that is, Harry. You're brilliant. <laughs> Thanks. So, and what I like about the, the jumbo dauber is that you can go all the way around the edges because there's a lot of edge on this project. 
and it also does a really even job. These are fantastic. You need them in your life. If you have these and you've used them, um, let people know in the, the comments and chats and stuff like that um, if you like it. Yeah, well, and let us know if you use the Jumbo Dauber, what all kinds of projects are you using it on? We like to use it when we are painting any of our wood cutouts or embellishments or projects like this. We use it on our wood rounds. We use it to stencil, but only through big areas. So if you're painting inside of a big oval shaped stencil, it's kind of like, it's a really good base coater. Yeah. Yeah, I agreed. Okay, so we're gonna get that dry. Put my dauber down. Okay, and then coat number two. So this, um, the Jumbo Dauber has this nice little hole in it for your finger and it, like those of you who have, are comf who have been with us for a while know that I don't like to stipple but the dauber makes stippling easy. Like it's not like an, it's not exhausting for your arm. And I know that, I mean, like I work in the garden, I do all kinds of stuff like that. I don't know why I find it so exhausting, but I just don't enjoy doing it. Um, Cindy says that she used the, the daubers and also the ink sweeper, which is the skinny one, are great on tea towel stripes. We love them. We love the ink sweeper for that. Um, we have someone who says, I use the Jumbo Dauber for just about any project that isn't too large. I use them on wood cutouts, word cutouts. Love the Jumbo Daubers. Use it for cutout edges and also large cutout areas on stencils too. I use the Ink Sweeper on embellishments. So um, Kelly Janish, June, Cindy, lots of people using them on their projects. Yeah, they are like fantastic. So um, when I did trade shows um, in my earlier life here, um, when we went to the trade shows, I would bring just, you know, a big thing of jumbo daughters and um, they would sit in water and float. I didn't know the trick that Carrie invented about putting a brush handle into it to make it sink. And um, so I would go wash them out in the convention center, you know, bathroom or whatever. And I'm still using those daubers. Like they are, you don't think they're going to be durable. Um, when, when I first saw them, I was like, oh, okay, I'll try it. But I don't think this is going to work. You know, but isn't this um, so much easier than using that silly foam brush? I think when I painted for 30 years, I think that I, I was tortured by no supplies that were cool. And so I think I forget to think about all my tools. Uh, Amelia asked a question. She said it's a stupid question. I don't think it's a stupid question at all. Um, does it make a difference if the blow dryer is on heat or cool, and does the heat somewhat bake the paint? So with your blow dryer, you are not going to want to turn it on and put it directly over an area and sit there for a few minutes and watch it while it's really hot. We always keep the blow dryer moving continuously over our project. We have had, um, I was helping some people paint in a workshop and she was blow drying while my back was turned and then I turned around and she had it on hot and she had it right over top of it and she didn't move it. So then the paint was really sticky yeah. because it did get really hot. And you also want to keep it moving if you have your stencil on over top of it, too. You don't want to put it on hot and just hold it in one place. So as long as you're continuously moving it, mm -hmm. it the temperature doesn't really matter. Yeah, um, I use it on hot. Um, Lena is a diehard, wants to use it cold. She swears by that. Um, I haven't had a reason to switch, so I haven't. haven't. Um, so either is fine. I think that 
whichever is fine. But um, the I always move it. And then a really cool trick that Lena taught me was when you have this taped on there and you're going to paint and do the thing, you've got a couple coats and whatever, when you blow dry and move the stencil with the air, it lifts it up off of your, as long as you're taped well, the little bit of fluttering um, helps your um, stencil not stick. Sometimes if you do too many coats, if you've had this happen, you know what I'm talking about. You have too many coats on something, and then when you lift it, the paint's fresh enough, it might peel. So if you get too many coats connected with the paint, with the surface paint. So that's something that the fluttering does help as well. I'm going to go ahead and blow dry these. Okay. And for whatever reason, I'm always, you'll see me always and forever touching my stencil as I'm drying it. Surface. I don't know why I do same. that. I'm, yeah. I have the same way. I always have my hand moving on my surface. Yeah. I, um, I think it kind yesterday of Yesterday I put a, fingerprints in my paint. Well, and that lets you know it's not dry. Yeah. But it's just a really, I put my hand on it very lightly and yeah. I just move it. And then you can start to feel when it doesn't feel sticky and when it doesn't feel cold or when it doesn't feel tacky anymore. Yeah, and then I'm going to go ahead and get these little nuggets based. Um, this is going to be something that's silly. You'll watch and let's like watch and learn. Um, hi, Persephone. I'm stylus hunting. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to put this sponge on top of this thing and it's going to lift it. So what I'm going to do is use my stylus. And then move my stylus around and that will keep it anchored. See how that did that? Every time. Okay. Now I could take this minute and I could do the back of my thing, but we've got, you know, you guys don't need to be watching me base coat things. Um, although today base coating things was a great lesson. Okay, and my stencil is here. And we're just gonna do this in basic. So I'm gonna lift that all the way up as high as I can go. Get our tape. And can you tell me what stencil that is? I'm gonna look at something real quick. It is um, 1783 underscore one. So I'm using my eye calipers to um, see if this line is straight with this line. Okay, and that's something that is very important. Um, it doesn't always matter if you're straight, but I've got straight lines on here, and that's going to translate. And I'm crooked just a little bit. So Kelly had asked what size stencils are you using on this project. So it's really going to be determined by what phone stand you get. The phone stands are different sizes, so some might have a little more area than another one. The basic phone stand is, I think it was seven and a, seven and a fourth by three inches. So that information is in the description of the phone stands, but our stencil, that stencil itself, can you tell me the measurement of it? Yes, so this stencil is Should be a four, four, by six. four inch and it's by six and almost a half. And so there's a big amount of space on the outside of this stencil so that it lays flat and does all that kind of stuff and you don't make a mess with your brush. So do know that most of the times, many of the times, um, we have the interior dimension on the listings. Yeah. The older the listing, maybe the less of that detail information there is um, because we were new at doing it all. And then a lot of times if there's a specific surface, like our phone stands, our tablet stands, our rounds, things like that, we typically will have a collection of stencils that we have painstakingly put together. <laughs> and I say that because we have 7,000 titles. And so there are going to be some stencils that are four by six that are going to fit a phone stand. 
and there are a lot of stencils that aren't going to go that small. So for our special surfaces, we have gone through our collection of designs to make sure that we give you what you need and say, okay, well, here's what you can. These things fit. Yes, this is what fits. And here's an easy collection so you don't have to do the searching. Yeah, um, searching for the stencils is probably one of the harder things that um, we do. So um, we have learned that we need to make collections so that it's easier for you guys to do that work. So I am offloading. I'm using the dome brush. And how many of you got the jumbo brush? And what do you think of it? I'm excited to hear. It's like just released, I think like last week's, the week before. Um, so by the time you do the thing, um, by the way, if you're new to our website, it is studior12.com. And we are, we have been in business as Studio R12 for I think like six years as R12. We've had websites for 17 years. So we were in the very beginning of having websites. We've been doing this for a long time. So um, we are here for you. We are here to answer your questions. And um, when you order, where I was going with that, is when you order, you will get quick service. And we have customer service. Stephanie is her name. If you guys love Stephanie, give her a heart because she's amazing. Okay, I'm going to do a second coat. Then I'm going to talk to you about this brush. Okay, this brush, it's a dome, and so it's cut as a dome all the way around. And so when you have a traditional stencil brush, they do things like push under your stencil. And because this is so fat, um, it picks up a lot of medium, and then it's very difficult. So see how this is dancing, doing a little hula dance right there? Um, it's not doing what this does. I can make circles. So I'm not just getting like a hula, hula, hula and like not getting all of the paint removed. You have to offload to stencil appropriately and um, it's not possible with traditional stencil brushes. I don't even know how they survived being stencil brushes. Okay, so I am stippling here. You know I don't love to stipple, but there's a lot of small things. And when I have small things, I want to have... Um, I want to stipple because my paintbrush won't um, find all the edges by swirling. And red also is mm. a color that a you might find yourself wanting to stipple. Red does not cover very lovely sometimes and you'll find yourself maybe having to do coat after coat after coat after coat after coat. So sometimes stippling will help get there quicker, but you do want to make sure that if you are going to stipple that you be extra cautious with your offloading yep. because when you're stippling, you're applying more pressure and you're pushing more paint into the brush, which then increases your chances of bleeding under. Okay, let's take a peek. If you're a peeker, give us a hands up there in the chat because I think it's so important to um, get brave enough to peek. Okay, so I'm taped, so I'm going to just lift one side and see if I think that's bold enough. I think I need one more coat. So, and red is a color that is a pita to use because it just doesn't want to cover. It's an expensive pigment, and so it doesn't get as pigmented in the manufacturing sometimes as it could. The um, stylus trick of holding down your stencil would work here as well. And I'm going to save that brush, verify that I like it. Okay, I think that's great. Super little sassy thing. Now we're gonna add sass with frass. Because we love, I don't need the big guy. We love to have little things like this. Um, one of the things that you need to pay attention to and grow your collection, just order one every time you order. Um, all of these patterns, music notes and chevrons and bats and anything. So I, I learned to paint um, by hand, not by stencil. And um, anything with sharp edges on it, like leaves, bats, chevrons, anything like that, diamonds. If you try to do it with a brush, 
like I've got good brushes, like I, I've got good brushes. I can make some little diamonds and stuff like that, but I have to go through a painstaking process and it never looks as good as with a stencil. So just these things um, clip together in one of these um, scrapbooking um, little screws. And so then you can get, you know, making bubbles, like so many things. And like you need these mini stencils in your life. I believe those are um, part of the sale that we have nice. going on today. Okay, so now we're gonna see how far we can get with this. I'm gonna drop it down just a little bit. Mind your edges and try to go for even when you have patterns. I'm gonna use my love as my straight edge. Okay, and then we lift up. Um, a lot of times when I'm sitting down to paint, which I haven't sat down to paint in a million years, um, because once you stencil, you can just stand. Anyway, I usually um, just take my little tapes and I put them off to the side. But nowadays I'm on camera every time I paint and for whatever reason that does not translate. So, but I usually just pick those back up and now I have my tapes and I just reuse them. Okay, so let's see if we think that we're okay. So we had a question. Natalie said she has the Adirondack chair phone holder. What is the best way to remove paint that may be making it difficult to put together? Ah, super good question. Um, Natalie, thank you for that. Um, okay, so if you got heavy handed on your paint application um, or sometimes like the air swells things, um, you know, there's, there's like climate and all the things. Um, if you have that happening, then sanding is your friend. So you can take and like if I'm trying to get this guy into that hole and it's not working, I can sand it down and then give it just like a wash of black to take out any scratches and stuff like that. Um, so there's... The sanding is going to be the way. And then you can also, because I'm going to need 800 bits of sandpaper one day in my life, um, I save every one of them. So we'll go to this guy right here. The other thing that you can do if you don't want to mess with anything that you've painted is you can give this a sand and get rid of some of that that way. So that is another way that you can do it. So this might actually be the best way is just to go ahead and sand the slot and then do any patching up that you need to do. Okay. And now we will apply black diamonds. Now, are you doing that all the way down? I am. Okay. I'm going to do it all the way down. So we had someone say you could use the heart with the swirls at the bottom too. So if you did want to do that, you can do your couple layer of your diamonds and then use a multi-masker or a piece of tape to mask off so that you don't get the diamonds where you don't want them. And then you could just use the diamonds as a little bit of a band and then have space at the bottom to still do other things. Yeah. Um, the, um, I thought about only doing them in that band, but I didn't have enough room to, um, to make two layers of it. And I wanted a little bit more diamondness going on because diamondness is really a word. It is. Yeah. All right. And then round two, what I love about stenciling is when you get to the bottom, you can go right back to the top and put the next coat on. Self dries. And then that is also something that's going to be determined by your heavy or light handedness and if you're stippling or swirling. So Patty is stippling here and it is a small area, but there are going to be times that if you especially are stippling and you have three or four coats of paint, you might have to hit the blow dryer between layers so that the paint's not wet and you're trying to put the next layer on. That's when when something happens called digging a hole and then oh, it, you it guys. gets messy. Yeah. The um, digging a hole, wet paint. Okay, so we're going to put our little tapes over there. When you have wet um, paint and you go back over it on a big area, like say you have like, you know, you're making a, a heart or a elephant or, you know, whatever shape cut out. Um, when you have that and you go over wet paint with your stipple brush, any stipple brush, 
you wet attracts wet. So a wet sponge cleans up water way better than a dry sponge. So wet paint is attracted to wet paint. The water molecules go together and then that removes your wet paint off of your wet project and then you have a mess. And filling a hole, whew, that's that's just not okay. So we do have video on <laughs> how to how to not make that happen and how to fix it. Yeah. So super fun. So you can see the application of this to be like I want one of these for my bathroom. I want one of these for my kitchen. I want one of these for um, my husband's office. I want one of these for. You know, everybody that, you know, and gift-wise, guys. I mean, who um, doesn't? I, everybody has a phone. If you, yeah. I mean, even, like, if you're 10 and up, pretty much, yeah. you have a phone. Yeah, and, you know, we, I don't know about you, but um, the YouTube, you're on YouTube now. We're on mm -hmm. Facebook Live. We're living, and you're learning from us. Um, I don't hardly Google read anymore. I want to listen to a real person mm -hmm tell me real things, and um, and so I am YouTubing. Carrie YouTubes and does the double speed. Oh yeah, I can't listen to anything on normal speed. YouTube, audiobooks, podcasts, if it's not on 1.5, it's too slow. Even listening back to our videos, do I talk that slow? <laughs> okay, um, so here we are, and you'll notice that the edges are nice and clean. Ink Sweeper to the rescue. Um, these are on sale. They are on sale. So this is what date? I don't even know. Third, fourth, four, three, twenty-four. Okay. Um, we did have a couple questions okay. about do you varnish when you're finished? Um, absolutely, yeah, I would. Um, and then with the um, varnish, I like. Let me get the right. Sure. The Deco Art DuraClear Matte Varnish. It's a polyurethane, and it is um, an amazing product. You can apply this with your ink sweeper as well. Um, so you could apply it with a brush. You could spray um, a varnish on. You could just wax it. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can do this. Any of the, the finishes that we do um, would be appropriate here. And then don't forget, you can turn this around and you can do the other side, but like quick, sassy gift. Um, just, I don't, I don't know. I love it. Did you yeah. say a couple more questions? Um, well, a couple questions on that. We did have someone say that she painted one for her granddaughter and that she is like, um, I stencil, nope, that's not it. Oh, I don't know. If, uh, I made a princess phone stand for my granddaughter. This is from Natalie. One side is navy blue with white polka dots, and her initial, the flip side, is navy blue with a pink and fuchsia flower. She is the envy of her friends. Oh, I love it. I love it. But that's the thing is this just is such a great gift. Yeah. Like it's a, hey, I care about you, my, my friend kind of thing, yeah. you know, like. Carrie, I'm going to make you one of those. Oh, thanks. I think you already did. I think that, <laughs> that, one, one that yellow B1 goes on, <laughs> goes on my desk. This one lives on Carrie's desk. This one lives on my desk. Um, and now this one's going to live on my desk because I think it's fun. Do you varnish before you put it together? Um, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you want to be able to. The, the beauty of this is flat. So um, you can take that and you can put it away, pack it in a suitcase, um, you know, take it to work, bring it home, put it in your computer bag, you know, all of that kind of thing. I literally think it is like a tool that everybody needs because this is this is a workhorse that um, earns earns its cheap, yeah. cheap, cheap little cheap, money. Cheap, cheap. <laughs> that's all, right. all. That's all for me. All right. That's it for me as well. Thank you guys for your questions and make sure that you like, subscribe, share. Hey, yeah. share. Share. Don't say that we, one very we do, often. We do like for you to share. Yeah. Share with your friends. And I also, speaking of share, I <clears throat> shared the link to our What Are You Painting Wednesday. So every Wednesday, we ask what you're painting. And we have several people who show us what's on their paint table. And it's a really cool way to get inspiration. Yeah. We share, we save a lot of the photos that our stencil fans post there. We have a big long running list by stencil design. And so then we're able to see what people are painting a lot of and how they're using it on different surfaces and what color schemes. And then, so we're able to get inspiration from them. And then mm -hmm. also share them with you guys on social media and newsletters to give you different ideas. And then we also do post some of them on our website 
under that specific product so that when you are looking it can for be famous. A, yeah, when you're looking for a stencil design, you might want to see more design options than what we have painted. And it's just, it's a really cool way to... And that's on Facebook. Yes, it's yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, you guys check it out because it's really cool. Um, you guys are so talented and um, we are grateful to be able to share this talent with you. And uh, we'll see you Tuesday. Yeah, weather allowing. <laughs>